Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner, and today we're going to be talking about Uniswap's latest update. Yeah, after- I guess we had to, dude. Yesterday we made the big bold prediction. I guess it wasn't even really that bold. Yeah, I don't you- even know wh- how we ended up doing that, but I, I mean, it, like, I, you know, the zeitgeist, the <laughs> <laughs> goddamn sentiment hit us. You know, like we, you could feel the hype building. Yeah, I think they dropped like some kind of like meme video with like a unicorn like prancing in the forest or but, something like but that. But you know what? We did the video before they dropped that video. That's true. We did. So something else was like giving us the inspiration, like it was just the vibes. Dude. Yeah, we're like, dude, we haven't talked about Uniswap in a while. Yeah, you know? like what the hell they've been up to? Yeah, <laughs> it's been like three months since uh they teased the idea of a V three. So we're like, you know what? Let's look into it. Yeah, we found out. So, you know, it's definitely coming soon. At least the announcements were, and then yeah, here we are today. Announcements have been made. Yeah. Yeah, Hayden was saying that he couldn't like wait to drop this announcement. <laughs> yeah, yesterday. Or and whatever. Yeah. So yeah, he was, here it he, is. he wasn't lying, dude. He didn't wait very long. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> here it is. So let's let's talk about this announcement. So <clears throat> let me pull up their article here. It says introducing Uniswap V3. So ultimately there's a couple of main takeaways that we can we can gather from this, this mm-hmm. article. I think the biggest one that we need to talk about is their new licensing. <laughs> yeah. I feel like uh, let's go through it first and then let's, okay. let's end it on that. Because yeah, that is to us that's the most like it's the, the the biggest change. It's yeah. the big mind fuck for sure. Yeah. So all right. So the one of the updates here for V three is basically concentrated liquidity, which ultimately means capital efficiency. So what do they mean by capital efficiency? Well, according like the the macro perspective as to this big update is essentially instead of providing so much liquidity on the broad range of a price of a particular token, you can concentrate that liquidity in a smaller range with less money and still gain the exact same fees as a liquidity provider. Yeah. So, and there's a little cool calculator that we'll show you in a second uh, as to what that looks like visually, Mm -hmm. but ultimately you can get the same exact fees with a lot less money by providing liquidity for a much narrow range for a, a token uh, pair. So why do you think they focused on this as like their main core tenant to this update? You know, well, we were talking about how their liquidity providers is the engine of Uniswap. Yeah. And so I think it was a big priority for them to focus on their LP providers to, I guess, have the stickiness because right now Uniswap is getting a lot of competitors. Yeah, they are. And they want to provide a platform where people provide the liquidity to Uniswap, not anything else like Sushi Swap and all the trash swaps out there. Oh, damn. So, okay. so <laughs> that was a little, that was a little tough, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a sh- strategic move, I guess, to, yeah, like you said, retain some of that liquidity incentive yeah. from their like liquidity provider community, Yeah, which is an interesting angle to take. Cause yeah, I mean, if, if we look at the price right now, like the reaction to these announcements, the, 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 the plebs are not happy with this yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in the sense <laughs> that it's, it's one of the interesting things they did announce and they addressed the, you know, the, the main thing that most people were requesting and demanding right is, is is an answer to the scalability issue yeah the fees the fees we want fee list transactions just like we're seeing on quick swap or yeah. zero exchange you know all these other new clones right but they address it in the sense that okay it's coming but first we're let's introduce all this cool innovative like new you know, like you said capital efficiency uh add-ons and then we'll kind of uh, address and roll out you know the optimistic roll-ups and stuff like that yeah know? So the crowd is not taking that too positively, it seems like, you know, because at the end of the day, the majority of the community is the user base, not so much the liquidity providers, you know. So one deep dive we need to do is into optimistic rollups because it's, yeah. I don't know if it's dependent on ETH 2.0 making that update in order for optimistic rollups to actually take place. Mm-hmm. And I don't think a project on Ethereum can just implement optimistic rollups, mm. right? I think they have to account for the big update. Mm in their software in their product yeah to take advantage of optimistic rollups once ethereum gets on there but i don't think they can inherently just implement it and all of a sudden the fees are less yeah you're probably right so, so that that kind of probably adds into why like you know the, this update isn't so like they kind of like scooted that and out that that yeah that was that like a feature lower... to the very back of the whole you yeah know, the show like you know oh by the way once the once once v3 is on layer one then we'll start addressing like the layer two integrations and stuff yeah. like that, you know, but that's the stuff people want to know about because that's, that's where the competition is right now. Yeah. It's for in sure. layer two. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and all these other blockchains, you know, so. I mean, if, if we want to stick with the analogy, the LPs are the engine of this machine, 
But yeah. the 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 swappers out there, they're the drivers of this engine. Yeah, exactly. There's no need to provide liquidity if nobody's going to be swapping, right? So Yeah. So like even though we're making like a nice comfy cushiony environment for these liquidity providers to like really, you know, come up with these custom, you know, risk management, you know, uh, capital allocation strategies like it's nice and comfy for them but for the from a user perspective i guess it helps yeah it helps it helps them like less slippage right like, sure more efficient trades but yeah again man like i don't know i, I will get to the interesting part like what this could mean like because there's like a big time delay between like these these gas issues being solved what this could potentially mean as far as like new clones emerging oh yeah you know what i yeah, mean for sure for sure that's what I'm interested in. <laughs> so let's take a look at this uh, this uh, calculator that they have here. So on this article, make sure you read it. It's actually pretty interesting. It's not it's not hard read, but they give you an example as to what it means to be capital efficient for a liquidity provider. Yeah. So for the most part, is in the V2 of Uniswap, you would have to provide like a lot more liquidity to get the same fee. So here's what it looks like. So in this scenario, let's say that you provided, you know, there's this range between a dollar and four thousand dollars for a particular token, right? Mm -hmm. So if you provided one hundred seventy-one thousand dollars in this range, you would get the same fees as you would otherwise provide one hundred fifty thousand dollars in V3. So it doesn't seem like a huge range, mm -hmm. but the the difference is is that if you concentrated that one hundred seventy-one thousand dollars into a much smaller range. Let's say between a thousand and twenty five hundred dollars, it would require you a, a one point three million dollars in V two to get the same fees that what otherwise you would get in V three by providing one hundred fifty thousand dollars in this smaller range. Yeah. So what does this mean? It says if you're a liquidity provider with one point three million dollars, and in in the V two world, it's like, well, I guess I'll just provide it for this token, and hopefully I get some fees, right? But in V three world, this all you would have to do is out of the 1.3 million, you just need $150,000, provide liquidity for this range, and you would get the same amount of fees in V2 and V3 with a lot less liquidity. Mm. A lot less money f from your own pocket, you get the exact same fees. Yeah, so that's the capital efficiency they said they mean, meaning like you don't have to tap in tap into that $150,000 actual like active capital at work and then the rest of it's just dormant you yep. know not actually being you know not providing liquidity for anything because the market isn't trading in that range that's right at the, at the current you know spot price right so yeah now you have a new responsibility if you want to be like a like a liquidity degen like just be like max liquidity yeah. master you know you got to really be you almost have to be like predictive in a sense. Like you want to front run the market and anticipate where the market's headed, so you can like allocate accordingly. You know, capture those fees. Absolutely. So let's yeah. let's talk about some strategies that a person who has one point three million to provide as liquidity. Now they only need to provide one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Now you have so much flexibility, right? Yeah. Like, so now you got one point one five million dollars. Yeah. So, so now like, what? What do you do with that? So now you, what you could do is provide one point one million dollars in other tokens, or you can say, hey, we're in a bull market. I don't think we're going to stick around this range for too long. So I'm going to provide liquidity here and over here. Yeah. So that when the price goes up, or actually when the price goes up. Yeah, you, got, you have a whole like tranche over there. Another yeah. tranche. Another tranche, yeah. Let's call it a tranche. And so now you're providing $300,000 in two different ranges because you're expecting the price to go up. Yeah. And so, it's interesting because if you, if you are that skilled and you're able to front run and predict the market... I'm assuming there's going to be like a, a, a transition phase when prices like move, like you're saying, where yeah. it takes a while for LPs to kind of like adjust and reacclimate to this new price movement. So yeah. if you're front running that, you're probably getting like a pretty oh, bad yeah. fee. Oh, know, yeah. If yeah. you're one of the first ones into yeah. like predicting that. If, if you're, yeah, if you're the only one predicting a, let's say a bull market where the prices are going to go up and yeah. you are providing liquidity for that range already, yeah. as soon as the prices move in that range, you're getting all the fees. Yeah. And we know how markets move. Like it's, it's freaking rapid. Yeah. So it's like whenever prices move that are that volatile, it's high volume. Yeah. That's so right. high fees. So yeah. So th this is the point. Like, there's an infinite array of strategies you can deploy here. Like yeah. in this little, little weird curve they've created. Yeah. So it's really up to you as if you, if you're holding $2 million in capital, like you can get pretty fucking wonky with this, you know, yeah. like as far as <laughs> strategies. And the cool thing is, Somehow they've NFT'd this. Like, oh, so yeah. you're not even getting like LP tokens anymore. I mean, you can, but I think it, they've they've incorporated NFTs into the uh, 
like the structuring of all this. They didn't uh, go deep into explaining yeah. the whole non-fungible aspect of this. I mean, other than because you're providing a, a range between, in this case, $2,000 to $3,000. That is a unique range. And yep. so they're they're providing you an NFT to represent that unique range. Yeah. Now, what does that mean exactly to have that NFT? I'm not exactly sure. And not a whole lot of details were explained in the article. I think that even they don't really know yet in the sense that the, but the fact is, yeah, now you have these non-fungible tokens with like unique characteristics to them that have probably like different reward allocations assigned to them or whatever. So who yeah. knows what kind of applications will be built on top of that in the future, you know, and leveraging these new tools, these new like financial assets, you know, as, as I don't know, something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and so now let's talk about a token that's, you know, within a range, right? So you're providing $150,000 within this range. There's a lot more people with $150,000 than there are people with <laughs> $1.5 million. True. So that means that there's going to be a ton more liquidity providers at $150,000 within this range because that's where the price is right now. Yeah. And so another strategy is, well, I have $1.5 million. I might as well put all that $1.5 million within this range and then capture a higher percentage of the total fees within that range. Yeah. So there's, I mean... Th- that's what they, it, this is a huge update for, for the liquidity providers perspective because now they have a ton more money to play with. Yeah. I guess that by you doing that, you're just, you're exposing yourself to a higher risk in the sense that if the price does move out of there yeah. and for some, whatever reason you're asleep at the wheel, you've just, you know, your $2 million or whatever is it's now not like doing anything. dead capital. Yeah. yeah. Basically. So, but as opposed to if you kind of like sh- strategize and accounted for these, this possible variance, then, you know, you you you'd be rewarded no matter what, right? You know, so lower risk, which is this is this is cool. This is this is the type of shit that traditional finance loves. Yeah, you know what I mean. This is the the security and the comfort that they need to like to actual contribute billions of dollars of liquidity at a time. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that they can actually manage that liquidity, make sure it doesn't ever get like completely. F- yeah, fucked. I mean, and then look at think of the different pairs out there. You have Dai to USDC. The, the range in differences in prices are within like a penny or two pennies. Yeah. It, it rarely goes beyond that. So you can really concentrate a ton of liquidity in just a very extremely narrow range just because you know it's not going to it's not going to change. Yeah. In the V2 world, you would have to provide, you know, in this case, five million dollars versus in the V3, V3 world, which is one hundred fifty thousand. And so you just have a lot more freedom in, in that uh, in this new update. So uh, then we have active liquidity. So because of this, you do have to pay attention basically as a liquidity provider as to what's going on. Here's the, the, here's the non-fungible liquidity part. In the V2 world, you used to get LP tokens, which was an ERC-20 token. And that represented the fee that you would receive when you were providing liquidity. So instead, they're giving you a non-fungible token that represents your range in liquidity. If you read this article, it doesn't really give much more details beyond that, but they're incorporating NFTs yeah. for, for a financial product. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. We've always been speculating, us in the NFT community, like, man, you guys don't even know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys don't even know what <laughs> NFTs could do in the sense that, you know, right now they're just used for, you know, PNGs and GIFs and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Like, as soon as we start figuring out legitimate utility to them, that's when the game changes. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. It's, it, you know, and this is a good it's, use case. It, it is it's a really unique. good one. Yeah. You know, your position, the liquidity you're providing is completely unique, right? You're selecting yeah. a range. You're providing an uh, uh, an infinite amount of liquidity, right, from $0 to $100 million. I mean, these are unique positions for everybody. And plus, they're coming from a specific wallet. So yeah. it's infinitely unique. So uh, another thing that they have implemented is like advanced oracles. So they have time-weighted average price oracles. So... If you're looking at a token, a, a pair of tokens, you can look at the time-weighted average of the price uh, because history has shown that the, these token pairs lie within this range. So they're going to give you tools to say, this is probably where the range of, of liquidity you should be providing. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, that that's also in this article. So that's, that's actually very useful because remember how we were looking at the graph and it was very difficult to know who to provide uh, to delegate your graph tokens to. Yeah. So this is just a just another example of like how the whole space is kind of improving with providing information to liquidity providers in this yep. case. So this is the one, the licensing. Yeah. 
So yeah, when I saw that, I was like, WTF, mate, what? What's this licensing shit? <laughs> so, yes. So they talk about the licensing in this article, right? And the most notable thing about this is it's called a business source license. So what is a business source license? So this comes from, this is a trademark trademark by Maria DB. And it says, to provide a mutually beneficial balance between the user's benefit benefits of true open source software that is free of cost and provides open access to all the product code for modification, distribution, and sustainability needs of software developers to continue delivering product innovation and maintenance. So with this business source license, anybody can copy, modify, make a derivative of, as long as the project who is making that derivative product does not make money from it. So who the hell wants to do that? So the... (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's a tall ask. So so now we have... So these features help preserve the critical freedom aspects of open source while enabling a viable business model for professional software developers. So this is the main takeaway that we took away is that now we're not going to see a bunch of yeah. projects just like straight ripping and, and forking projects and then like siphoning liquidity from Uniswap. Projects that are actually innovating in the space, they can do that as long as they pay a license. Yeah, it's interesting because it sets a precedent. I don't think this is ever like I don't know. As far as I know, this hasn't been attempted before. Yeah, because it's definitely like it's definitely in conflict with what like the general sentiment of like the open source ecosystem is supposed to be about. You know, where it's like the main sentiment of that is you know you you create software, you open source it because it allows other developers to to leverage that that innovation and to potentially like add on top of it new layers of innovation because of it, and it kind of like speeds up the development process. You don't have to fucking reinvent the wheel every single time you're yeah. creating a new product. So in this sense, you know, now there's like a barrier to that. So there's going to be people resistant against this. Like, hey, this is not open source. This is like a very corporate, 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 yeah. the word? very corporate, you know, yeah. very not See, it, conducive it, to innovation. That's true. You know? But those who are making a derivative or just forking the project and they're legitimately making it better, they should just pay the license. Which they... Potentially will. You know? And those who are yeah. anonymous, who are just like ripping software just to like scam people. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe not scam just because, maybe, you know, I mean, well, they just don't give a fuck. Well, you even know, then, cases, even then, because it's see a opportunity. straight copy. Yeah. If, if they're not innovating, they're just copying it. Yeah, they're definitely copying. They're cloning the hell out of it. And, you and, know, and not providing any like r- value to the ecosystem. Yeah. No additional innovation. Right. They're right. just kind of like. They're leveraging that tech that someone bought before them created, and then they're just onboarding a new community. Maybe yeah. it's on a different chain or something like that, so it feels like an, a superior product. You know, it really is the same it's thing. It's the same thing, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's kind of like, yeah, that, that, so this is like the beginnings of like uh, migrating away from the wild, wild west aspect of like the crypto space, you know? Like this, they're trying to formalize it a little bit and like I- implement some standards. A business you know? etiquette, like you yeah, said. A business etiquette, yeah. Yeah. So this is the biggest takeaway. I think uh, this. I think this is a good thing for the entire crypto community because Uniswap is actually innovating in the space, right? Yeah. They're they're creating new products, yeah. and they're trying to prevent other projects out there from just taking yeah, their it's, it's resources. Two, it's two years, right? After two years, after two years, it's yes. free reign. You can do whatever the f you want with it. You know what yeah. I mean? But up in, before then, you basically, gotta like you got to at least let us know. That's what the, the purpose of this license, right? Yeah. Like, you got to at least come through us if you want to, like, you know, deploy it onto your own smart contracts. Yeah. You know, just let us know. We'll give you the approval. Maybe you pay a small fee. Yeah. Usually that's not a big deal. And that's it. As opposed to, yeah, free for everyone. Like, within a week, we're going to see Sushi 4, 5, 6, and 7. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. it's just going to be madness out there. And right. I, I still kind of think that is still going to happen. I don't think... I, I, think I don't you're think right. the Anon community is going to 100% like just... Like honor the license. Yeah, honor the licensing, yeah. like the, the corporatism. Yeah, you because you can, you, can, you can steal the software, you put a nice wrapper on it, like, <laughs> like a, a website for a food, <laughs> yeah. and make it really attractive, create your yeah. own token. That yeah. token is going to do a thousand X just yeah. because you're, you're doing like a, a shit tier token, right? Or maybe you actually do add some... Because one thing we didn't talk about, from these announcements, we haven't seen any new... You token utility from the Uniswap True. token. It's still just the governance token. Yeah. For whatever reason, they didn't like figure out a way how to like, like give, implement it. Give you a reason to stake this damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So maybe some other project that they're out there is going to figure out a new reason to like, you know, 
That's true. Clone this new liquidity pool model and then and then tokenize, tokenize like it the and, utility. Yeah, and find a way to stake it and you know now yeah, now we have a reason for this thousand X. Yeah. You know, there's that's actually innovative. That's know? true. That's a good point. So we'll see, man. It's going to be, it's, I, 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 I'm predicting drama, <laughs> you know, like some crypto drama ahead for Uniswap. Yeah. For one, for one reason, because it's going to take them a few months to roll this out, like how they desire it. So by them coming out and announcing it months in advance is giving the, the, the community of developers now, now it's all in their head. Like, oh shit, yeah. maybe this is the way. So now they have some time to kind of like roll out their own versions of this. And the difference yeah. between them and, and what, what Uniswap's doing, they're not going to run through six months of auditing yeah they're, they're not gonna create this code this software they're just gonna put it out there people are gonna use it and it's gonna blow up yeah token's gonna rise yeah yeah i think that's what, what potentially could happen so all right guys hopefully you guys learned something understood a little bit more about uniswap make sure you like subscribe and comment below what you think about uniswap's update follow us on twitter at the block runner and also at metazone.io and we'll catch you in the next video peace